Have you ever seen Portugal dominate an EU4 multiplayer lobby? Nah, that would never happen. Portugal's too small and weak, right? The last video, we started as Portugal, going down our mission tree, colonizing Africa, as well as the New World. Our peaceful growth and expansion was interrupted by the Kilwa player, and we were thrown into our first major player war. With the help of the Spanish, we were able to throw back Kilwa and defeat him, forcing him to bankrupt. With the gold mines in southern Africa secured, we started building a strong base, propelling us into a top 5 great power in this campaign. At this stage, we were focused on colonial expansion, as well as culture converting Africa. Our next major player war was against Arabia. We were fighting for control of Zanzibar. Our quality was worse, but we won due to sheer numbers and we continued the Portuguese expansion. Shortly after, Great Britain declared war on us for Cuba. This caught us wildly off guard as most of my troops were still in Africa after the war with Arabia. To top it off, Sokoto also declared war on us in the same time we were fighting Great Britain. With the help of the Spanish though, Sokoto was made quick work and after 35 years of fighting and destroying the British Navy multiple times, we were finally able to beat the British and take colonial North American land, all while culture converting Africa, turning all of Africa that I owned into Portuguese or at least an accepted culture. Now you're all caught up. We're now the third largest great power behind Italy and Russia. We're back playing Giga Portugal. Just hit the tactical national debt decision. It's a decision in, Ge in Geckers. Um, we need to now fix, we need to do a couple things. We need to fix subsidies. Okay, I'm fixing everyone's subsidies. I will help all of you guys building. I just, like right now, since we spent like basically, we warred Arabia and then warred uh, Great Britain. So we've been like in war for like something like 50 years straight. Um, I really am lacking on buildings, uh, like really hard it's a right new now. Record. One thing that's good is that my cultures are really good. Uh, but I need to build up. We're having like a colonial war like you have in Victoria, trying to block off 13 colonies. The main focus of our build up in this time was Tech 14 manufactories. We had all of the trade, so now it was really important that we get these manufactories up and we get them in every single province that we could. Kept my points to dev so we can have the building slots, as well as spending admin to expand infrastructure. Meanwhile, our colonies were also focused on building up as many manufactories as possible. Making us go from about 300 ducats of eco to over 500 in less than 20 years. Fix the yellow chat, we need to fix the yellow. Turn it blue. Make the yellow blue. I will make the yellow blue again. Well, not again, because it never was blue. Back to fixing the yellow chat. Okay, so here the university is done. Fixing the yellow. There's yellow here. Why is it yellow? There's a church here. Get rid of the church first. American politician. Oh my goodness, dude. Shut up. No, we're talking about fixing the yellow, like yellow menus. Switch, please don't ban me. A few minutes later. Like all of this is good trade goods. I know it. Yeah, it's all slaves. Slaves are amazing. Slaves in real life are horrible. But in the game, they're amazing. We got like a lot of the good menus down. Want to turn all that yellow into blue. You kind of have to micromanage that. Look at the building slots in Portugal, dude. Look at this. Holy built! Roman Empire formed. Oh my god. Is that boss music I'm hearing? The one million manpower Portugal. There it is, chatters. A one million manpower Portugal. With a million men at my disposal, it was time to take action. While we were building up, Great Britain was expanding into France. I took this now as an opportunity to go into the New World and take colonial Eastern America. This time, I wanted to ensure naval superiority throughout the entire war. And while the Roman Empire was the military hegemon, the naval hegemon was still up for grabs. So we started building heavies, and a lot of heavies. Once we had enough heavy boats, we took naval hegemon and declared war on Great Britain. In order to win this war, we would have to fight through the Appalachian mountain range, meaning that most of the time, since we are on the offensive, we will be fighting on unfavorable terrain. I was hoping our superior numbers would simply outweigh the bad terrain. Uh, it needs cannons. Let me go in with the cannons. Look, look at these ships here in the... Where? 100 heavy, 100 Okay, well, I'm making some naval moves. That's not when I, I go to... Yes, focus on the left. Okay. 
We lose about like 12k per tick, so that's something to keep in mind. There's a second one in the mouth. Yeah. This is, this uh, is favorable terrain for us though. It's a minus two for him. I think we're winning south. He retreated. He's, He's retreating. Retreat. He's doing a retreat trick. We have reinforce. Reinforce Portugal, Portuguese Mexico. Or Portuguese uh, cube Brazil. Reinforce the main battle. Maybe you have troops in the back from the troops. He's throwing. Jesus. My cannons got in the front. I have no cannons. They have no front. Um, are we reinforcing the colony then? Being the heavy ships. Don't retreat the north battle. Don't retreat the north battle. Oh, we won the war, and New Portugal doubled in size. Still, our nation is getting stronger. This campaign, the accepted cultures map mode, everything is accepted. We have a bit of Swedish, but we're all already culture converting that away. All accepted cultures, chat. The masterpiece. Full naval hegemon, oh, four months away. Full naval hegemon, minus 10 all power costs. Navy is still insane. Yet again, it was time for more buildup. The downside of having this many subjects as well as this much land is that you will be spending most of the game building up. At this point, we had a lot of buildings, but since we got minus 10 all power costs from Hegemon, and we also got a bonus from Tropical Wood, trading in Tropical Wood for Deving, it was now time to spend a lot of points on developing not just ourselves, but also our colonies to keep them loyal as well as to grow them faster. Colonies do have a malice to troop quality. However, near the late game, they can provide a lot of manpower, not just by themselves, but also because they're crown colonies, they can also give a percentage of their manpower and force limit towards my manpower and force limit. A final agreement was made between us and Great Britain where I would end hostilities in the New World if he gave us almost all of colonial Eastern America. He, I left him with some so he could get a merchant from it. Um, and I wouldn't go for Canada. Canada doesn't go into uh, Sevilla, by the way, in terms of trade. Um, and in exchange, he wouldn't attack us back and he would be happy with having Canada and a little bit of colonial Eastern America. This now meant that we could commit all of our New World troops to fight in the Old World for my own territory growth. Meanwhile, the Roman Empire was in a war against Russia, the North German Federation, Spain, and Great Britain. With Russia occupied, it meant that Persia was free, and I knew that if I attacked Arabia, which I planned to do, Persia was going to join which I didn't mind at all, and I knew that we could win that war. For decking. Down south, maybe. I think we're gonna need one more cannon star. 42 ICA, 45 cab combat art combat Ooh. ability. Reverse the first. Multiple battles are good for us, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm encircling. We're encircling the battles. I'm hoi fouring. Are you ready to retreat the other two battles? I think we keep the second one. Keep, keep the first one. Uh, we oh, just retreat. retreat. Just retreat. I don't think we still battle them. We just win. No, I think we down. still. I think we still do it. No, we still do no, it. Still do, it. do both of them, right? Yeah, and then I have another can. Another can stack. Stack. I have another can stack. Open and we engage you. Yeah, yeah, I'm retreating. I'm retreating north and re-engaging. In this war that I truly realized how powerful my quality was getting, my strength wasn't in discipline or morale or even infantry combat ability. My main strength was my artillery. And the best way we could take advantage of that is by building somewhere between 6 to 10 cannon stacks and then engaging as many battles and sieges as possible, overwhelming our enemies. And that's exactly where I turned the war when I started implementing that strategy. Ay, 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 ay.
We won the war against Arabia and Persia. Not really taking much land, because I didn't realize it at the time, but these provinces I was taking were extremely high dev, all minimum 30 dev. But we were able to get almost all of the important provinces in the Great Lakes trade node while taking the last province in the Zanzibar node, making our trade setup more complete. But the fun doesn't end there. The Roman Empire was once again attacked by the North German Federation and Russia while also fighting Spain and Great Britain. I didn't like that Russia and North German Federation were just taking free land from the Roman Empire, so I decided to help the Roman Empire indirectly by declaring an imperial war on the North German Federation. Our troops moved up from Africa, through Spain, and through Italy to go to southern Germany. The Portuguese World Police were here and ready to fight. Germany surrendered. He couldn't handle the amount of troops and stacks that we had. So I ended up taking Scandinavia from him. What? This Portugal has more manpower than Russia. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have more manpower than Russia. Did Russia go quantity? He did. Oh my god. We have this without going quantity ideas. And that's not including, chat, my colonies. Rio de Plata with 800k. Rio de Plata has more manpower than Great Britain. Oh my god. Rio de Plata has more manpower than Great Britain. New Portugal has almost same. <laughs> the mod made a recent change that it's harder to maintain your colonies and keep your colonies in uh loyal the more you have and i like i said yesterday that's a good change no one should control the entire new world i think it should be very discouraged for people to own the entire new world because it's really hard to balance to be like okay we have to now balance for someone owning the entire new world because that happens almost every game remember P purple room last year that was basically like the col colonizers were winning every single game because they would one guy would win all of new world get really good players on all the colonies Come super strong and then be, no one could touch him and have insane eco too and no one could touch him um i think that um i think it's a good change i think we need more troops I, I, waiting for manpower to go to max and going to go full force limit and we're gonna deck soon guys and waiting for a bit of drill <laughs> and cannon stack for every time <laughs> i want to see what's going on I don't think you want to see what's oh. going on. Oh Jesus Christ, maybe I shouldn't with my... <laughs> <laughs> it was time for Iberia to conquer Africa. All of Africa was rightful Spanish and Portuguese clay. And we were ready to kick out anyone in our way. And we started again with Arabia. Uh, it's like discipline. No, but I just did a bajillion damage to him there though. I mean, I'm retreating that battle. Way. Same casualties there. But it was a minus one, remember that. With the Persians, now Mughals, occupied with the Russians and their own land, Arabia was alone in this war. And I felt kinda bad. So I told my colonies to stand down 
as I didn't think I needed them to win this war. For the next war, I'm gonna snake to Egypt and we're gonna fight for Egypt. That's the next goal. And we're gonna attack the oh. Roman Empire. Yeah, don't, don't, don't help me in this war. It's like too high tech to me. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm not gonna use my Whoa. anymore. Whoa! While I was fighting Arabia, the Roman Empire declared war on Spain. So I told my colonies to go to Iberia to help Spain immediately while I finished the war against Arabia alone. Against Arabia, I didn't lose a single battle, pushing forward further into Ethiopia. We do have 1.7, no, no, let's just, let's just make it a flat number, you know, 1.710 million men in this war. It wasn't long before Arabia unconditionally surrendered to us and we were able to connect towards Egypt, allowing us to get a new front in this war against Rome in Egypt. Oh my god, get Adrian. Oh, you can remove rival like that, right? Oh my god, oh. oh I see a stack here. I don't think we win this. There's 39 new Portuguese. <laughs> 39k new Portuguese. After sieging Egypt, we split our army in half, sending one half through the Levant to Anatolia and the other one to Tunis. I also sent some troops to Iberia to help Spain in the main front. Even able to open up a front in Labourd thanks to military access from Great Britain. And we're fighting, it's bugged, my maps are bugged, but we're right now fighting the North German Federation and the Roman Empire, and it's me and Spain. Navally, we dominated the Roman Empire in the Mediterranean versus his galley fleet with our heavy ship fleet, giving us control of the seas. Boom. Uh, up in Greece. The real gains we made were in the Anatolian Greek front. The Romans tried to stop us in the Levant, but we were able to push them back and push them out of Anatolia. The next challenge was crossing Greek islands and landing in Greece. Meanwhile, the front in Iberia was remaining essentially the same since the beginning of the war. You can engage him in Greece we're, and send the second kind of stack around. Yeah, yeah, we're doing both. I just fight him here. I take both battles, dude. Fuck it. Come no, 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 no. <laughs> This is, help me take both. Help me take both. We were able to successfully land on southern Greece, fighting the North German Federation on the beaches. Meanwhile, in Iberia, we were finally making headway, pushing them out of Roussillon. However, it wasn't long before they got reinforcements in Greece and pushed us back. did, however, make a successful landing in the island of Sardinia. Go, 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 go. <laughs> need reinforcements in that battle. Can we move up, uh, move up Sicily? Can I also control the right battle? You have 160k in Turkey. We decided to open another front, this time in Sicily. And at the same time, I built another 400,000 troops down in Africa to send to the front lines. I sent the Sicily stack to help here. There you go. I, might, I don't think it's a stack left because it's new dispatch, but... Walk into scores. Scorch marks into like... Yes, to beat the port game. Greek front is going good again. It's a lot of good. Yeah. The Roman Empire out of manpower reserves, he unconditionally surrendered, securing us part of the Nile, Cairo, and Alexandria. And to make my borders nicer and the passageway to Egypt safer, I declared war on Arabia again for land. Oh, to kill it. Just look! 
Look at these. Uh, this is manufactories. Counting houses. Barrackses. Force limit buildings. Force limit buildings. They have the max of those. And soldiers households. Gee. Nice colonies. One colony gives me... Yeah, there's three colonies giving me 200k plus manpower. Then... The, there's yeah each colony is giving me like 200 force limit new portugal is giving me 374 force limit that's insane keeping the culture converting going i need everything to be an accepted culture now Jesus. okay everyone say hi youtube now this will be in hi the video hi youtube now as we became the number one power in this campaign and manpower force limit and in economy i realized a coalition was brewing all of the nations that we angered throughout the campaign, Great Britain, Roman Empire, North German Federation, and Arabia, were plotting to attack us. We mobilized 2 million troops and we're building up to 3 million slowly. Organizing this many troops just on your own is a lot, let alone our colonies adding in on top of that. While we're in war, all of our troops with our colonies at this point was somewhere between 4 to 5 million troops. Seeing the alliance brew, I preemptively striked against the Romans in Egypt, calling in my ally Spain. Immediately, both Germany and Arabia were called into the war. From the early stages of the war, we were able to fully occupy Egypt as well as Sardinia and Sicily, our navy again showing superiority in the Mediterranean despite fighting galleys with heavies. Once again, we were employing the same strategy that we have been for a while now. Multiple, multiple cannon stacks, multiple sieges, multiple battles, overwhelm the enemy with numbers and win with superior cannons. We were able once again to cut reinforcements in Corsica while Spain and some Portuguese troops were able to push further into Italy through France. This time, instead of waiting for the Greek front, we pushed through Italy from Corsica. And since Arabia was in this war, the Levant front was very different and I couldn't commit all my troops into fighting just the Roman Empire. We also had to fight and siege down the Arabs. While defending North Italy, the Roman Empire took out his South Italy reserves, allowing us to move from Sicily to Southern Italy. Actually down to cannons, we can. My cannons are better, right? Oh my god, that's so Wow, sad. that was such a close battle. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Retreat, 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 retreat. By losing, we did better casualties, and it wasn't long before we were taking the same battle, and this time, we won it. Medina? Oh, stuck Arabia. Arabia stuck battle. Ah! This is what you were warned cannon. about. I need another cannon stack here. Britain then joined against us, putting us in a 4v2 against Arabia, Roman Empire, Germany, and Great Britain. Arabia's defenses were being pushed. He had one more mountain fort in Mecca before we were going to be on his capital. Italy was almost entirely sieged, but they were holding in the north making it very hard for us to push any further. With the help of Britain, they were able to push us back to Rome and even further beyond. Meanwhile, Arabia was making his last stand in Yemen, but it was only a matter of time before he was defeated and bankrupt. Italy became a World War I front, where three battles held entirely across the peninsula. But this time, it was us that were victorious and able to push them off of Rome moving back to the north part of Italy. If we could connect our Iberian forces and our Italian forces, 
This war would surely be over. I've trapped the Arabian army in a little corner. <laughs> oh, wave it, dude. Now, we France, now we go up to France. Now we go up to France and to Germany. <laughs> the final days of the war were coming. The fronts were connected. Not only was France and Italy connected, but now the Middle East front was connected through Anatolia. Coalition forces made their final stand in the province of Como. That's it, man. It's all crumbling. Uh, the numbers are too big. The numbers are too big. The numbers are too big. We won! And because of that, all of Africa was controlled by Spain and Portugal. And even just looking at the culture conversions, we had converted a lot of land, even after the initial conversions. By the end of the campaign, not only were we the number one GP, but we were also number one by dev alone, not including our colonies. On top of that, we had 6 million max manpower, which was the highest, without taking quantity ideas, and we had 4 million max force limit, also the highest. We didn't have the highest income, somehow Rome still had the highest income, I think it's because of coal and uh, furnaces, but we were still super duper strong, and we had this beautiful borders and beautiful arrangement with Spain. That's the end of this campaign. I don't think we're going to see a Portugal like that for a while. That's probably a once in a year, once in a lifetime maybe, Portugal. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.